Now we're going to talk about thread tension. So when you're sewing, getting to grips with what is the best tension to use for your fabric can be an absolute nightmare. Here I'm going to demonstrate a simple method of determining what tension you need to use for the fabric that you're sewing. Now the tension that you require for your fabric can vary according to the weight of the fabric and how many layers you're sewing. Uh, so what I'm basically going to show you today is how to figure out the tension required for just a single piece of single layer of fabric with no folds or anything like that in it and then you can then adapt this technique according to whatever you're sewing. The method itself is pretty straightforward. All you're really doing is you're just sewing lines of sewing with different tensions assigned to each line. So you would basically put your tension to one and then sew a line on your fabric. And then put your tension up to three, sew a line on your fabric. And then five, seven, and then nine. So I'm going to do that just now and we'll see what the results are. I should add as well that when you're checking your tensions, it's important to use different coloured threads for the top thread and the bobbin. This way, it lets you determine whether it's the top thread tension or the bottom thread tension that's giving you problems. However, you rarely need to adjust the bottom thread tension, so in general, it's usually the top thread tension that you adjust using this dial here. So this is just some cotton drill thread using tension one. You don't need to sew that much, just a little bit of a line. Notice how I'm pulling out a little bit of thread just to go at the back there, just to stop it from uh, being pulled through the needle. So this is now number three. You just pull it behind each time. Number five. Number seven. I just realised I did number five twice, it's kind of early in the morning here, but never mind. Number nine last. Okay, I've got quite a lot of loose threads here, so I'm just going to tidy that up before I show the end result. So, this is my little tension square that I've done here. So, what I'm just basically going to do is just mark with a sharpie what tensions I used. So, one. Three, five, a second five because I'm a derp, seven, and nine. And then you do the same on the back. So this time it's going the other way because I've flipped it over. One, three, five, five, herp derp, seven, and nine. So that's that done. So let's have a look at the result. So when you look at the top thread tension, which is the yellow thread here, you can see it actually looks pretty okay. And you think, oh, okay, right, so, so I could use any of these and that's fine. But then you look at the back. Okay, so all of these yellow dots that you see on here is where the top thread has 
gone down into the needle plate of the sewing machine and then because there hasn't been enough uh, tension on it pulling the thread taut it's caused a loop when it's gone over the top of the bobbin and pulled it back up again. So what's basically happened here is that the thread at the top, the yellow thread, hasn't been pulled all the way back through the fabric again when the needle's gone up out of the fabric and that's what causes these loops. Now these loops can get caught up in the inner workings of your sewing machine, so inside the bobbin race and also the feed dogs which are the little teeth that feed the fabric through the sewing machine. So these loops eventually cause everything, like your fabric and everything that's going through the machine to get stuck. And when it gets stuck your machine makes clunky sad noises and that is what causes the thread to snap. So if you have these little yellow loops here from your top thread that means that your tension is too low, you need to increase it. And you can see with tension level 3 I still have quite a lot of little yellow loops there. Now if you have a look at number 5 there aren't any yellow dots here. So that would seem to indicate that tension level 5 would probably be the best one to use. But if you look at the, ten the second lot of tension level 5 that I've done here, you can see I do have a little bit of looping at the start and the finish. Don't worry about that too much. If it just happens at the start and the finish, not at the beginning of the line, in the middle of the line rather, um, it just means that you know when you've, when you've pulled your fabric away to cut it, you've just pulled a couple of the loops out there. Um, if you backstitch at the front and, the at the front and end of the uh, line, then that wouldn't happen when you pull your fabric out. So you know it's just kind of an artifact of the fact that I haven't um, backstitched these ends. So as long as the middle bit's fine, that's great. But you can see for tensions levels 1 and 3, it's definitely not fine. You've got these yellow loops here. So tension level 5 is probably a good bet. Now this is actually double fold fabric that I've used here. Um, I did this because I had quite a few problems sewing this particular fabric when I was working with it for a costume. Um, I was sewing a layer of bias binding over the top of that and that required me to put the tension level up to 7 in order to get it to sew properly because I was getting quite a lot of looping because I'd added an extra layer of rather stiff bias binding to the fabric to be sewn. So that's why I've double folded this to increase the amount of tension required. I reckon that probably if I hadn't folded it over a tension of 4 would be about sufficient. This is some cotton drill that I've used. Um, it's a slightly heavier form of cotton actually um, and uh, you can see here that I've got some looping for my pink uh, top thread which is here so um, that's tension level one that's number three and then with number five you can see that the stitching is starting to go a little bit crooked um, and then with tension level sevens and nines they're also looking slightly crooked. So I'd go for probably tension level 5 or maybe tension level 4 in between these two um, for this particular fabric because the higher your tension the more crooked your stitching is going to go and it will start to ruck up as well. Next we have some silk. So silk is a very light fabric, it doesn't need a high tension and this is what happens if you sew fabric that requires a low tension at too high a tension, it will start to ruck up. So this is tension level 9 here and you can see how much this has gathered up together but even at tension level 7 and even 5 you can see there's still some rippling happening there. So if you go too low you get some looping as shown here. So I've got little pink dots all the way down here because of the top thread looping over the top. It still happens a little bit at level 3. So for this particular silk fabric here I would use tension level 4 in between 3 and 5 because 5 is too tight and 3 is ever so slightly too loose. And lastly this is the back side of some leather wrap. So this is the front side. You can see it's kind of slightly vinyl-y kind of fabric almost. You can see all of these top thread stitches look absolutely fine but when you flip it over and have a look at the back you can see I've got lots of yellow dots on tensions 1 and 3. 5 is looking alright, 7 and 9 are looking fine if maybe a little bit crooked so tension level 5 is what I would go for. So basically you want to go for the lowest possible tension um, that doesn't cause looping. If you put your tension up too high then your threads can be really tight and if you actually pull the fabric out of the machine you can end up sometimes snapping the thread um, if the tension is too tight. So you want, you want a happy middle ground basically. So the lowest tension that you can go 
without having all of these loops happening and messing up your sewing machine. Obviously, if you sew at too high tension, then you're going to get loads of rucking up of your fabric. But generally, higher tensions are more likely to damage your fabric than they are to damage your machine. If your tension is too low, however, you get all of these loops that cause a bit of a bird's nest in your feed dogs. And that's basically what happens if you sew your fabric at too low a tension. It will just get stuck repeatedly. You need a wool snap. Your machine will make lots of sad noises. And I'll just show a little video of that just now where you can actually hear the threads getting caught. And you can actually hear the thread snapping as well. So my thread snapped just then because there is a tension problem. Um, to show you exactly what's happening, um, the top thread is fine. Um, sorry, the bottom thread is fine, but the top thread snapped. But actually, the bottom thread isn't fine because when I actually take this out, if you have a look inside here, you can see that there is thread wrapped around the central post. So you can see, there we go, so I've just pulled that off, but that's how you can actually get snarling up happening if there's a tension issue. So what's basically happened is that um, the top thread has looped over the bobbin casing so much that it's actually pulled this out of the bobbin casing. And so that's led to the bobbin thread being wrapped around this central post here. So. I've been having problems with this all evening while trying to film this because naturally my machine, my machine decides not to cooperate when I'm trying to actually film something where I try to look competent. So um, with regards to actually fixing this, um, it's to do with the thread tension. So I'll talk more about that later. So I'm going to talk a little bit about machine maintenance now. So um, one of the first things is that every now and again your sewing machine is going to need a little bit of oiling just to keep the moving parts in it working properly. But you shouldn't be doing this without consulting your machine's manual first. Um, the machine that we've got is quite old, so I've lost the manual donkeys years ago. Um, this is an online version of the manual which I've got here. Um, so basically, it's showing here to remove the outer cover of the sewing machine. And um, it has a set of arrows to show whereabouts inside your machine needs oiling. Now you shouldn't be putting oil anywhere other than as indicated by these arrows because if you put oil in places where it's not supposed to go you might find you end up with oily thread or that you've got oil going into other bits of electronics and things that you shouldn't be putting it into and things like that. So let's just have a quick go at that just now. First things first, you want to just unplug your sewing machine entirely from the mains because you are putting something liquid into some things and if you put it into any electronic bits without meaning to, it could go very badly. So I've just completely disconnected the machine from the power mains. So this is the outer cover of the sewing machine, so let's just take that off. I've already unscrewed it previously, there's a screw that keeps it in place. And here we go, this is the inside of the sewing machine, all the bits that make it work. So you've got your bulb here, just a little aside thing that you can actually replace this. Um, you can see here you've got the maximum wattage um, that it will take. So it will only take 15 watts. If you put in too high of a bulb, which I did once by mistake, you end up with a nice burn mark on the outside of your machine, which is not really what you want. So make sure you put in a suitable replacement bulb that does not exceed the wattage stated on the label there. And here we go, so these are bits that needed oiling, so they wanted us to oil this bit here, that bit, this little drive shaft here, and this bit, oops, this bit at the bottom here. So that's where we want to put our oil. So. You normally get a little bit of oil with your sewing machine. Um, it's mostly full because I don't really oil my machine probably as often as I should. So the machine instruction manual tells us to just put two to three drops of oil in each location. So I'm just going to put a couple of drops here and then a couple of drops on this shaft here and on this bit. and on this bit down the bottom here as well. 
So there we go. It does get a little bit messy, so make sure you wipe your hands before you handle any fabric or any threads or anything. Now, the machine also, uh, the machine manual also recommends that you run the machine for a few minutes on high speed. Um, the reason for that is because if you start putting thread through all of these bits, you're going to end up with oily, oily thread. So you just need to run the machine um, for a little while just to get everything all circulating nicely. And that just ensures that you're not going to end up with oil in any places that you don't really want it to. It just disperses it nicely during the operation of it. Another place that the manual recommends that you put a little bit of oil is also underneath here. Now there's two screws here and here that you need to remove in order to actually get access to this. But um, there's actually only one place that you need to remove this needle plate to actually put oil in. The other place where it recommends you to put some oil is just in the bobbin race at the top here. I'm not going to do that just now, but it was just to demonstrate that that's the other places where you can put oil. Again, you need to run the machine at high speed for a couple of minutes in order to disperse the oil prior to doing that. The other thing that is important to do with your machine on a much more regular basis is to actually dust it. Now, if you have a look in here, you can see there's quite a bit of dust down here. Now that I've got a bit of light in here, you can see there's a little bit of dust on here. And there's some dust here as well. Now, I actually do this fairly regularly, so it's not actually looking too bad at the moment. But if you're working with uh, fluffy fabric or fleece or anything along those lines, you're going to need to give it a good brush out after you've finished your project. So, just with a paintbrush, just jolly good clear out like so don't blow into it by the way because you're just going to blow all of the dust further into the machine first thing to do is just get a, get a brush and just get rid of the worst of that got a little bit underneath the uh the bobbin race there but it's not it's not too bad overall To all those little nooks and crannies. And there we go. 